In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Smart Tool feature introduced in Media Composer 5.0. Smart Tool is designed to allow editors to perform common editing operations without having to enter specific modes from the timeline. The tool itself is broken down into five different individual tools. Segment mode for lifting and overwriting, segment mode for extracting and splicing, overwrite trim, ripple trim, and audio keyframe adjustments. Any combination of these tools can be engaged and disengaged simply by clicking on the tab to the right of the Smart Tool. Since the Smart Tool itself is all about saving you steps in terms of clicking around in the interface, the first thing you want to do is to map the Smart Tool to your keyboard. Introduced in association with the Smart Tool is the new Linked Selection button. Link Selection allows you to select a video clip and automatically select its related audio clips, and vice versa. Unlike the Smart Tool, I don't recommend mapping the Link Selection tool to your keyboard since you can employ it on the fly simply by holding the Option key. For example, with Link Selection disabled, if I click on a clip, it highlights just the video clip. If I click on a transition, it highlights just the transition. If I hold down the Option key while clicking on a clip, it will select both the video and audio clips. If I hold down the Option key while clicking on the transition, it selects the transition point for video and audio. Now that we have a basic understanding of how the Smart Tool is set up, let's explore it even further by taking a look at some practical examples of when and how you would use it. Notice that I have all five modes or tools activated within the Smart Tool. Now in this part of my sequence, I have a transition that presents a slight continuity problem. As I go from what we'll call Shot A to Shot B, I notice there are issues in continuity with both eye line and body placement. As I position the cursor near the edit point, you notice it automatically engages different trim modes. When I'm near the top of the track, it puts me into overwrite trim. If I move to the bottom, that's insert trim. And if I park right on the edit point, that puts me into dual roller trim. In this example, I'm going to use overwrite trim. So by clicking and dragging near the top of the track, I can automatically perform an overwrite trim until I get to the point where I'm happy with the transition. In this next example, I have a shot where our actors are observing and reacting to some paramedics coming into their office. What I'd like to do is to break up this shot with the shot of the paramedics. So I'm going to park at the midpoint of this clip and mark an endpoint. Further down in my timeline, I have that shot of the paramedics. I'm going to select the video and also shift select the blank track below because I want to do an insert on both the video and audio tracks. With the cursor parked near the bottom of the track, I'll be in segment insert mode. So I just click and drag, and by holding down the command key, I can snap to the endpoint that I marked on the track. Now I have an insert shot of the paramedics coming into the building. Now that I'm happy with that, I can take care of another continuity problem that I noticed. In this shot, the camera starts to pan to the left, and you see the paramedics coming into the building. That's too soon. So what I want to do is take off some of the end of this clip. To do that, I use Ripple Trim. So as I park near the bottom of the transition and click, that engages Ripple Trim on the outgoing point of Shot A. I can't use Link Selection here because the audio and the video aren't related, but I can Shift Select the audio as well so that I maintain sync. By clicking and dragging to the left, I can fix the continuity between these two shots. We've already seen an example of how to do a segment insert using the Smart Tool. Now let's try doing a segment overwrite. I have a shot here that seems to go on for a little bit too long. What I want to do is to interrupt it with some B-roll. To do that, I'm going to use this shot down here. It's a shot of a guy being wheeled around on a gurney. To do the segment overwrite, I'll simply place the cursor near the top of that clip. The red arrow indicates that we're going to be in segment overwrite mode. From there, I just click and drag to where I want to place this clip over the original shot. Yes, but it was more uh, complicated than that. You okay, so I'm happy to have that shot in there, but I'd like to see it a little bit longer. To do that, I'm going to use a dual roller trim. So I'll just park the cursor right on the transition and drag to the left to add to the front of that shot. The last function of the Smart Tool that we'll take a look at is audio keyframes. I have a part of my sequence where the actor's voice goes up and down in a whisper. Okay, okay, listen, this is going to sound really bad. Janice was in there. 
What I'd like to do is to use audio keyframes to bring that whisper up relative to the rest of the clip. Before I can add audio keyframes, I'm going to expand my track control panel and make sure that auto gain is on for that track. To add audio keyframes, you can use the audio keyframe button in the UI or you can map it to your keyboard. Mapping it to a key is much more efficient because I can add keyframes on the fly while the clip is playing back. Okay, 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 listen, this is gonna sound really bad, but, um, Janice was in there, and then he came, and he started pounding on the doors. So there I've automatically added four audio keyframes during playback. Now with the audio keyframe tool enabled, just by placing the cursor over these keyframes, I can make adjustments within the clip. If I want to adjust multiple keyframes all at once, all I have to do is mark an in and out around the keyframes that I want to change. If I need to change their placement within the clip, holding down the Option key allows me to move them left and right within the clip itself. Okay, 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 listen, this is going to sound really bad, but, um, Janice was in there, and then he came, and he started pounding on the door.